In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a sales funnel to your website. A sales funnel not only helps you increase the conversion rates from site visitor to customer, but it also helps organize a lot of the processes that you need in order to run your day-to-day -day business. And the net result is that your customer ends up having a better experience because you're able to respond to them quickly and in the proper context, you're able to follow the lifespan of your prospect lead or customer, and you're able to deliver a more consistent and timely experience by reducing the number of channels that you're communicating and creating one solid workflow. So before we get any further, what I'm going to do is show you a sales funnel. This one is at this website right here, and it works very basically. You go to the website, Curiosity Killed the Cat. There's not a lot of information on the home page or landing page. You enter your email address, and then once that email address has been entered, you get access to the rest of the site. I created this using the Web Starts form, and the way that you opt people into this can be different depending on your business. In this example, I'm using the motivation for filling out this form is to learn more about this particular product, but depending on your product, you may want to add some additional fields to your contact form. For example, you might want to ask for a phone number or a name or even so much as an address. It all depends on your business type, but just remember that people are not likely to fill out this form for no reason. You must give them a reason to fill it out. And the more of those fields that you ask for, then the stronger pull you have to create for uh, filling that form out. So for example, if you're, let's say, asking for name, phone number, email address, and physical address, then you might want to promise that you're going to mail them a free sample of your product, and then that would be justification for asking for all of that data. So hopefully you're following along there. Now let me show you on the back end of Web Starts where you do this. If you go in to edit your website, and I'm in the dashboard view because I'm already logged into my account, what you do is you just go add, and then you're just going to add a contact form to your website, and that's what I've done here. But under your contact form, I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. First is that you can add the fields that you want right here under add a field. Next, you can change the labels for those fields. So for example, if I add that field and I click field settings, I can change the label on this button, for example. So let me show you what that looks like. And I can also change the label on this text field. Now let me draw your attention to form settings. This is an important area because one is you're going to want to make sure that you get notified when somebody completes a form. That way you know that your sales funnel is in good working order. You can also add emails by just clicking send to another email address and then entering that email address. Confirmation page is where you want to send somebody after they've entered their information into the form and clicked submit or continue. And you can choose any page of your website to be that page that they'll go to. But for this example, I use a thank you page that I created. And that page simply just says, thank you for your submission. Somebody will be contacting you right away. And that's because for this business model, we need to get people on the phone or we need to talk to them in person before we can complete a deal. But if you're just selling a physical product online, you can just send people straight to your store catalog or whatever you want, wherever you want to take them. Next is the mailing list. By default, your emails that are collected are going to go into the default list. I've created some additional mailing lists using the WebStarts email marketing app, which I will show you later. 
and those list names are contacts, customers, default, and members. So I'm just going to choose customers and then I would just insert this form onto the page and then you can style that form and place it wherever you want, like change the color of the text and of course uh, just drag and drop it, save it wherever you want. Of course, I already have a form on this page, so I'm just going to delete that. I just wanted to show you how to create that form so that you can start capturing leads. The next part of the sales funnel that you're going to want to do is send out auto response emails. These are pre-written scheduled emails that go out at different intervals. And you do that by using the Web Starts email marketing app and you can find it by returning to your dashboard, scrolling down to email marketing, and then enabling the email marketing app. The email marketing app does cost a little bit of money, so be sure to upgrade to the appropriate plan, but I assure you it's well worth it. You'll make your money back several times over if you minimally do this work. Once you click on the manage email marketing app, it'll load up with your lists. Here are the names of the lists that I showed you earlier that were available to select from the drop down menu in my form builder. Their contacts, customers, default, and members. I can create a new list by clicking add list and I can give that list a name, a from name. That's the person who'd be sending it or business name. And then a from email address, which would be the email address that they would reply to if they received an email from uh, this campaign. You can, you can create the autoresponders just going into the autoresponder tab, click on add autoresponder, you choose the list where you want the autoresponder to go, you choose your subject line, and then most importantly, you choose when to send out this email, and by default we have immediately one day, two days, three days, four days, so on and so forth. You just type up the body of your email here. You can use both HTML emails as well as text emails, and then you can save that, test it, preview it, whatever the case. Going back, clicking on autoresponder again, you can see these are auto responses that I wrote, and they go out at different intervals, and I can edit those at any time, and then click update if I want to change them. You can send the broadcast email out to all of your contacts by just choosing the list or all lists and then composing the email and then going through and clicking send. You also have access to some things like your current email schedule, the history of the emails that have gone out, and then under settings you can do things like change your name and email address. What I've done here is I've created autoresponders that give people a link to go and find out more information about this particular property, but you would create a link to your store, or you would create a link to the product that you're selling or the service that you want them to book. Whatever that action is that you want them to achieve by going through the sales funnel, you would use that there. Now another thing that I want to show you is that if you go into your lists and you click on email lists and you look at your subscribers and click over here view subscribers you can see all the people subscribed to your list. You can search for a particular subscriber and then over here what you can do is edit that contact data and at the bottom you can move them from a list to another list. You can also find that data under the contacts app and that lets you build a complete database of all your contacts. So if I were to, for example, click on this person's email, I could fill it in with their first name, last name, their physical address, all these other things. I could also add some fields uh, here. And if you add those fields and then add them to your form using the form builder, then you'll be able to put the data that you capture into those fields for the contact app. Once somebody does a booking with me, what I do is I go into the email marketing app and then I just move them from one list to another. So for example, I move them from the contacts list to the uh, customers list. So I just uncheck contacts and then I check customers 
and then they receive a different string of follow-up emails and then also I can send broadcasts to those people separately so for example if I wanted to just send a broadcast to people who have booked with this property and I wanted to get reviews from them I could just send them an email just by clicking compose and then choosing my customers list those are people who actually booked with me and then send them that email so there's a lot of different ways that you can use this sales funnel to like I said convert more of your leads into customers but also control the workflow for those customers so you always kind of know who's filling out your form who's coming to your website who's inquired who's gotten in a more serious conversation and ultimately who's checked out if they've purchased from you online well that's it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video and be sure to go to webstarts.com to create a free website, but not just any free website like all the other free website builders, but a, a free website that will actually help grow your business and create a professional uh, version of your site online. And in addition to that, leave your questions and comments below and I'll be glad to get back to you. Thanks for watching.